Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and let's talk a little bit more about the end of the universe. Okay, maybe let's not go that far, but let's actually talk about this new study that may have actually found a kind of a clue that would tell us what's going to happen to our universe in the next few possibly billions to trillion years. It's not really good news though, so there you have it. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now, before we start, um, I actually have to kind of briefly tell you about the dark energy. First of all, we don't really know what it is. We know it's something that keeps pulling things apart in the universe, because for the past uh, 20 or so years since the discovery of dark energy, we realized that the vast majority of stuff in the universe is actually moving faster and faster and faster apart from, uh, from everything. So in other words, um, if I were here and you were about, let's say, a million light years that way, you would be moving away from me. But if you were two million light years away from me, um, you would be moving away even further and faster. So in other words, the universe seems to be actually expanding faster and faster and also accelerating its expansion. And that's something we didn't really believe at first, but then the math seems to suggest that it's true. According to some of the more recent uh, calculations, about 72% of stuff in the universe is dark energy. It's this force that's pulling everything apart, with about 23% being dark matter, the stuff that keeps everything together, specifically galaxies, about which we also don't really know much. And then the rest of the stuff, about 4.6%, is things that you see, things that you touch, and things that you can interact with. This is essentially the regular matter. So what exactly is this? Well. In short, we don't really know, but what we do seem to know, or at least what we can see, is that we can actually calculate by how much things kind of expand in the universe. And um, in a very recent study that you can actually find in the description below, these two scientists right here from the University of a study di Firenze, I'm not gonna butcher this, I'm horrible with Italian names. But anyway, the point is, they actually took a look at um, various cosmological models that we currently have, and also measured some of the things that we already kind of measured, but did it a lot more accurately. And on top of that, they discovered a completely new technique for how to measure distances in space. Altogether, what they've discovered is that it seems that uh, we underestimated by how much the universe was expanding. And on top of that, they also discovered that it seems that the amount of dark energy that our universe possesses actually increased over time. In other words, it's not really a constant, which kind of creates a big problem because we assume that it was a constant amount. So it's still a very interesting and somewhat controversial study. We definitely need a lot and a lot of follow-ups on trying to discover what exactly they've actually discovered. But in essence, what this implies is that the universe seems to be accelerating its expansion over time. In other words, today it's expanding a lot faster than it was expanding a billion years ago, and in one billion years from now, it's going to expand even faster. Now, that's a bit of a problem because... Okay, let's actually maybe take a look at a simple scientific example to see why this is a problem. So let's say I put two different objects next to each other, and this is assuming that basically this is the uh, stuff in the universe, because they both have mass, eventually they'll collide with one another, right? Yeah. Now what if I give both of these objects um, acceleration away from each other? Well, they'll actually start flying apart first, like you saw in a second, and then eventually they'll collide back with each other. So essentially they are recombined into a single object. However, what if I keep increasing the acceleration of these two objects and essentially keep giving them more and more speed in order to make sure that they actually never collide. Well, in that case, they're, they're going to start flying apart from each other and eventually their speed will increase further and further and further until they will be really, really, really far apart from each other. Because actually, that's exactly what we've been observing. Uh, if you were to look at an object really, really far away, you would see that it's moving away from you ridiculously fast. And its acceleration is also increasing depending on the distance. And that's actually not something that we didn't know about before. We knew that this is happening. But what's new in this particular study is that, well, first of all, they actually discovered an incredible new way of using super, super bright galaxies known as quasars to calculate distance. 
Um, in a nutshell, what they actually did was use a ratio between the ultraviolet light that is usually formed by infrared matter and the X-ray light emitted by the matter that basically collided with the black hole to measure um, or to find a relationship between distance and the brightness. It's a very, very brilliant technique and it essentially now allows us to use quasars as a kind of a measurement candle for distances. Previously, we've used two types of measurement candles for distances. One of them would be this right here. This is a type um, 1A supernova, basically a supernova that usually always has a similar brightness when, when it happens. And we can use this to calculate distances to various galaxies. The second very commonly used um, distance candle is what's known as a Cepheid variable. And these stars basically change their um, luminosity and they do so very, very predictably. And you can use this to estimate at, at the distance at which they are actually located. And so these uh, were previously used as, as the candles for measuring distances, but now it seems we can also use quasars. And on top of this, these two scientists, they actually collected data from uh, basically 13 billion years ago, about 4 billion years more than we originally had. They were able to actually uh, compare the data they collected to the data we already had, making sure that everything is correct. And so overall, their study is actually quite rigorous. Uh, the amount of detail in here is quite remarkable. But what's really the main point of the study and what does it actually mean to us living here in this universe? Well, the point is that it seems that the actual density of dark energy is increasing over time, thus increasing the expansion of our universe and thus eventually most likely leading the universe to rip, rip apart. It seems that the end of the universe is going to be what's known as the Big Rip. So let's see if we can actually maybe simulate this here using Universe Sandbox. But the idea is a little bit unnerving because for the longest time we didn't really know what the end of the universe is going to be. We assume that maybe it's actually going to kind of combine back into the singularity, uh, basically the origin of the Big Bang. Or maybe that the universe is uh, going to kind of continuously expand forever and ever and ever and never stop. But the fact that we now believe that it's very likely that it's just going to rip itself apart is um, curious, unnerving, and very, very, very interesting. Now, we don't really know when this is going to happen. The actual estimate is anywhere from a few billion years from now to basically a few trillion years. But depending on what we discover with follow-up studies, we either will actually have an exact date for the end of the universe, or we'll maybe find a correction to this particular study and be able to explain what these two scientists saw in some other way. And what's really important to understand here is that even the researchers in their study actually specified that this is just one of the possible explanations for the observation. Maybe they are wrong. So they're actually admitting themselves that it's not 100% accurate just yet. And so with time, we'll hopefully be able to discover what's really happening here and why they were able to find what they found. But I think the most interesting part of the study, at least for me personally, is that they were able to use quasars very accurately to actually estimate distances. And this is something that is very, very crucial because we need to be able to actually calculate distances in space using various means. And quasars are the brightest, the most powerful objects out there. And so we can now actually kind of be able to map the universe a little bit better using these particular techniques that they have discovered. And well, anyway, whether our universe ends up ripping apart and leads to the big rip, kind of like a bubble popping, or the results of the study could be interpreted in some other way, time will show. We'll need to have follow-up studies, we'll need to have a lot more observations to actually finally conclude what's going to happen to the universe. But for now, there seems to be a very large chance that the universe will actually die in a very large big rip. You may want to check out the video I made previously where I actually talked about what the universe will look like in about a trillion years. It is slightly outdated now because of the study, but the idea will remain the same. If this is true, in a few billion years we will not actually see any more galaxies, and a little bit later after that we will actually not even see any stars anymore, because things will be just too far away from each other. It's a very interesting concept. Anyway, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about this in one of the future videos, but for now, 
Enjoy the fact knowing that we actually might finally have an answer to what's going to happen to the universe after a few billion years, possibly maybe a trillion years. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and wants to know more about sciences and space using simulations and video games and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out and as always, bye-bye.